Hello and welcome to the All Flyers. Major Bob Crinnell, ex-South African Air Force, rated the Sabre a wonderful aircraft to fly. With 11,000 hours in 50 years flying a wide variety of aircraft, he should know. Here he is. So just some photos here quickly, the Sabre course that we were on. Beautiful aircraft to fly and as you see me sitting there, uh, arm on, there you are, your hand is resting on the throttle and you can fly to 250 knots with that canopy open. So it's a beautiful experience, just fly. South Africa was loaned 22 US built F-86F-30s during the Korean War and saw action with two squadron SAAF. The North American F-86 Sabre, sometimes called the Sabre Jet, is a transonic jet fighter aircraft, developed in the late 1940s, but outdated by the end of the 1950s, the Sabre proved versatile and adaptable and continued as a frontline fighter in numerous air forces. The few that are around now are in private hands and actual video of them difficult to come by. I was in the Air Cadets in the 1950s and a poster of the Sabre graced my bedroom wall. I marvelled at this fighter jet as kids today might marvel at the F-35. The Sabre was the United States' first swept wing fighter that could counter the swept wing Soviet MiG-15 in high-speed dogfights in the skies of the Korean War 1950-1953, fighting some of the earliest jet-to-jet -jet battles in history. Considered one of the best and most important fighter aircraft in that war, the F-86 is also rated highly in comparison with fighters of that era, such as these fighters. The Sabre's success led to an extended production run of more than 7,800 aircraft between 1949 and 1956 in the United States, Japan and Italy. Variants were built in Canada and Australia. The Canadair Sabre added another 1,815 aircraft and the significantly redesigned CAC Sabre, sometimes known as the Avon Sabre, or CAC-27, had a production run of 112. The Sabre is by far the most produced Western jet fighter with a total production of all variants at 9,860 units. The F-86 was the first American aircraft to take advantage of flight research data seized from the German aerodynamicists at the end of World War II. This data showed that a thin swept wing could greatly reduce drag and delay compressibility problems that had bedeviled fighters such as the Lockheed P-38 Lightning when approaching the speed of sound. By 1944, German engineers and designers had established the benefits of swept wings based on experimental designs dating back to 1940. A study of the data showed that a swept wing would solve their speed problem while a slat in the wing's leading edge that extended at low speeds would enhance low speed stability. The XP-86 prototype, which led to the F-86 Sabre, was rolled out on the 8th of August 1947. The first flight occurred on the 1st of October 1947 with George Welsh at the controls flying from Muroc Dry Lake, now Edwards Air Force Base, California. The F-86A set its first official world speed record of 671 miles per hour 
or 1080 kilometers per hour on September 15, 1948 at Muir Rock Dry Lake, flown by Major Richard L. Johnson, US Air Force. Five years later, on 18th of May 1953, Jacqueline Cochran became the first woman to break the sound barrier flying a one-off Canadian-built F-86 Sabre Mark III alongside Chuck Yeager. Colonel KK Compton won the 1951 Bendix Air Race in an F-86A with an average speed of 891 kilometers per hour. On the 2nd of February 1958, a team of Pakistan Air Force F-86 Sabres called Falcons set a world record at Pakistan Air Force Base Massour by performing a loop while in a 16 aircraft diamond formation. The F-86 was produced as both a fighter interceptor and a fighter bomber. The XP-86 was fitted with a General Electric J-35C3 jet engine that produced 4,000 pound force of thrust. This engine was built by GM's Chevrolet division until production was turned over to Allison. The fighter bomber version F-86H could carry up to 910 kilos of bombs including an external fuel type tank that could carry napalm. The F-86 could also be fitted with a pair of external jettisonable jet fuel tanks, four on the F-86F beginning in 1953 that extended the range of the aircraft. Pilots transitioning to the Sabre swept wings and jet engine saw many accidents and incidents since even experienced pilots had to learn new handling techniques and flying characteristics. Early on in the jet age, some US manufacturers instituted safety and transitioning programs where experienced test and production pilots toured operational fighter squadrons to provide instruction and demonstrations designed to lower the accident rate. As F-86 models continued to be upgraded, the learning process continued. Important design changes included switching from an elevator stabilizer to an all-flying tail, discontinuation of leading edge slats for a solid wing with a small forward mounted wing fence, increased internal fuel capacity, increased engine power and internal missile bay. While a solid leading edge and increased internal fuel capacity, increased combat performance, they exacerbated a dangerous and often fatal handling characteristic. The nose was raised prematurely from the runway during takeoff. The danger of over-rotation is now made a major area of instruction and concerns for current F-86 pilots. The 1972 Sacramento Canadair Sabre accident resulting in 22 fatalities and 28 other injuries was a result of over-rotation on takeoff. The F-86 entered service with the US Air Force in 1949, joining the 1st Fighter Wing's 94th Fighter Squadron and became the primary air-to-air -air jet fighter used by the Americans in the Korean War. While earlier straight-wing jets such as the P-80 and F-84 initially achieved air victories, when the swept wing MiG-15 was introduced in November 1950, it outperformed all UN-based aircraft. In response, three squadrons of F-86s were rushed to the Far East in December. The MiG-15 was superior to early F-86 models in ceiling, firepower, acceleration, turning, rate of climb and ability to zoom climb. When the F-86 was introduced in 1953, the Sabre and MiG-15 were more closely matched and by the end of the war, many American combat experienced pilots were claiming a marginal superiority for the F-86. Although the F-86A could be safely flown through Mark I, the F-86E's all-moving tailplane greatly improved maneuverability at high speeds. The MiG-15 could not safely exceed Mark 0.92, an important disadvantage in near sonic air combat. Far greater emphasis 
had been given to the training aggressiveness and experience of the F-86 pilots. American Sabre pilots were trained at Nellis, where the casualty rate of their training was high. Despite rules of engagement to the contrary, F-86 units frequently initiated combat over MiG bases in the Manchurian Sanctuary. In October 1951, the Soviets managed to recover a downed Sabre and in their investigation of the type, they concluded that the Sabre's advantage in combat was due to the APG-30 gun sight that facilitated accurate fire at longer ranges. The MiGs flown from bases in Manchuria by Chinese, North Korean and Soviet pilots were pitted against two squadrons of the 4th Fighter Interceptor Wing Ford based at K-14 Kimpo, Korea. The North Koreans and their allies periodically contested the air superiority in Mig Alley, an area near the mouth of the Yalu River, the boundary between Korea and China, over which the most intense air-to-air -air combat took place. By the end of hostilities, F-86 pilots were initially credited by American sources with shooting down 792 MiGs for a loss of only 78 Sabres in air-to-air -air combat, a victory ratio of 10 to 1. Of the 41 American pilots who earned the designation of ace during the Korean War, all but one flew the F-86 Sabre, the exception being a Navy Vought F-4U Corsair night fighter pilot. However, after the war, the US Air Force reviewed its figures in an investigation codenamed Sabre Measure Charlie and downgraded the kill ratio of the North American F-86 Sabre against the MiG-15 by half. The US Air Force accepted that its pilots had actually downed about 200 MiGs. Suggested reasons for the F-86 success include the fact that many of the American pilots were experienced World War II veterans, while the North Koreans and the Chinese lacked combat experience. During the Korean War, the Soviet search for an intact F-86 Sabre for evaluation and study purposes was largely frustrated due to the US military's policy of destroying disabled or abandoned weapons and equipment with US Air Force pilots destroying most of their downed Sabres by strafing or bombing. One F-86 was downed in a tidal area and subsequently submerged, preventing its destruction. The aircraft was ferried to Moscow and a new Soviet Experimental Design Bureau was established to study the F-86, which later became part of the Sukhoi OKB. Two types based on the US F-86F were built under license by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation in Australia for the Royal Australian Air Force as the CA-26 and CA-27. The CAC Sabres had the Rolls-Royce Avon Mark 26 engine with 50% more thrust than the J-47 and were known as the Avon Sabre. The RAAF operated the CA-27 from 1956 to 1971. According to the FAA, there are 50 privately owned and registered F-86 in the US, including Canadair CL-13 Sabres. Notable pilots of the Sabre include Squadron Leader M.M. Alam of the Pakistan Air Force, who became an ace, shooting down five Indian Air Force fighters within one minute in the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965. Absolutely incredible. Colonel Edwin Buzz Aldrin, US Air Force test pilot and NASA astronaut of Apollo 11 fame, who is credited with shooting down two MiGs over Korea. Major John F. Bolt, US Marine Corps, with six victories in Korea and previously six victories in World War II, thus the only Marine to become an ace in two wars. Major John Glenn, a US Marine Corps exchange pilot with three victories and the first American astronaut to orbit the Earth, later a US Senator from Ohio. 
There is heaps more to know about the Sabre and those who flew it. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more commentary such as this.